Hey, Mark, do you remember my hex lamp? Remember, like, we were on the show when I made it first, but I remember being super chill about not really talking about it much. So I don't know if I ever told you about it. Did I tell you about the hex lamp? Um, the friggin' hex lamp was every week, dude. What? Like, every time. It, it was, was every... like, it's it's my hex lamp. It's my hex Look, it's the hex lamp. Oh, I'm working on my hex lamp. Yeah, I, I remember the hex lamp. It's on the, it's right there. You're going to be super excited, though. Am I? I'm making a new hex lamp. <sighs> That's great, Nate. Yeah, so when I made it the first time, people actually reached out and they were like, how did you make that thing? So I thought, if I'm going to make a new one, I'm going to make a video about it. And if I'm going to make a video about it, my good friend Mark has to be at least part of it. So here we are. Delighted, man. Just friggin' delighted. To, so knew, my question to you would be, does a man ever really need one? Oh, Jesus. I've actually already got it, but the viewer doesn't know that yet. Wow, this really messed up the the lighting. Yeah. The hex lamp is everything, man. Anyway. It, it's, it's something. So I made the first hex lamp a couple years ago. I didn't know a whole lot about LEDs or LED strips or WLED. I found the project on Thingiverse and I thought this looks like a whole lot of fun. And I started building and I learned a ton in that, in that process, but I was never quite a hundred percent happy with the outcome. The lenses or the covers were always loose. I mean, like a good shake in the house and you know, like the dog runs by and the lenses fall out of the thing. The LED strip that I used is like a rubberized, made for exterior use LED strip, and it never fit quite right into the uh, the hexagons. So you end up with these like hot spots where all the lights are because I couldn't lay them in the way that I wanted to. So on the new one, I intended to put a lot more work into getting the lights to lay just right, get a good LED strip, get it so that I can line it up in the way that it's going to cast light into the hex instead of out through the lens to avoid that hot spotting that you see on the old one. So what spawned the idea of making a new one was I was I happened to be looking on Thingiverse for the old build because a coworker had asked me about it. And I found that someone had remixed it into a customizable version of the old the new one just gave you all of the hexagons with different exits put exit points on them and let you build your own shape so i thought this seems like a perfect time to try to rebuild it so i designed a shape on paper which ended up being tiny and hard to read but here's a picture of it and then i figured out where the led strip would actually line the outer edges of all the hexagons and then i numbered all the hexagons and i figured out which exit points we needed where and i started printing as they were printed, I, I basically printed them in order and I numbered them and laid them out so that I had a good idea of how to get them all glued together. Now, when they print out, there's also these little attachment that you put in between the hexagons, which is actually a good design improvement because on the old one, it didn't have those. And I have these gaps in between the hexagons because they never, they didn't quite line up right. And then I just kind of crazy glued them all together so that they would all be good and secure. Once they were together, I decided the next best thing to do would be to get the uh, LED strip laid out inside of there and get it stuck to the outer edges. Now the LED strips come with an adhesive backing. So all I had to do was get it all lined up and then I had to work the uh, adhesive backing, you know, the cover for the backing off and then get it stuck to the walls of the hexagons. I think I did a pretty good job of getting every single wall of the hexagon covered. So I was pretty confident that the light pattern was gonna be a lot nicer and more fluid in the new build. While I was doing that, I had the covers all printing out. Uh, the, the problem with the first layout, the first print that I did was the covers fit a little too snug. So what I did was I sanded down all the edges. Well, on the first time around, I sanded them down too much, and that's why they're loose. So this time I was careful to only sand them a little bit on each edge so that they would just fit snug. You don't want them so snug that you can't get them in there, but you don't want them so loose 
Remember, this thing's gonna be vertical on the wall. You don't want them so loose that the slightest vibration is gonna make these things pop out. Now, I suppose you could glue them in there, but I don't like to do that. But I don't have to, because if I ever need to get in there because the LED strip fails or something, um, I wanna be able to get those covers back off. Okay, once the LED strip is all laid out and stuck in place and all those covers are on and good and snug, now comes the fun part. We have to actually get the control board set up to go. Now, the control board is an ESP chip, ESP8266 if I remember correctly. There's an open source project called WLED that you need to flash on there. And there's a nice web tool that will let you flash WLED. I never can get the dang thing to work. I tried it on my Linux machine running Vivaldi, which is a Chrome-based browser, and it wouldn't work. I've never seen it work. It supposedly works. You have to run a Chrome-based browser. Maybe it works in Windows. Maybe you need the right drivers. I don't freaking know. All I know is it never worked for me. So I ended up going to get an ESP flash tool, which I'm gonna show you in my terminal on my Fedora workstation. So you'll need, you'll need to download the WLED binary image to your machine that you're gonna do the flashing on. You can get that from the GitHub repo that I will link in the description of this video. I downloaded the latest release. There are a bunch of release candidates and betas available. Download whichever one you want. Keep note of which chip you're using when you download. You'll notice there's a bunch of different download options here. I downloaded the ESP8266 version. I'll put a link to the ones that I have as long as I can still find them on Amazon. I bought them quite a while ago because I've used them for a number of projects. Once you've got it downloaded, you're gonna use ESP tool along with the USB port that you have your uh, device plugged into. So you'll wanna connect using the micro USB port on the ESP8266 board to a USB port on your machine. And you'll have to run it using this command. Now, after it writes, it'll restart the ESP8266 board. And as long as it restarts, you should be good to go. After it's back up and running, it should broadcast a wireless AP. I think it's just called WLED underscore AP. And there is a default password on there that is WLED1234. What I actually opted to do after I made sure that it was broadcasting, which tells me that the thing is flashed and working properly, is I disconnected it and then I fired up the soldering iron. All right, so I have these cool little plugs that I've used in other projects. It goes through and then you tighten this nut on the back and that gives you a nice little plug for, for these guys. You can see there's a plug there, and then this plugs into that, and that's how you power your project. Now there's other ways to get that done. This will give me a five volt power source, 10 amps. Something to think about is how many LEDs you've got dictates how many amps you need. Now. I have a 10 amp supply, so I'm gonna do my best with it, but there is a calculator that you can run to find out how many LEDs you have and how many amps you need. What'll happen is if you don't have enough amps supplied by your adapter, then the LEDs won't be as bright. So um, I may run the calculation, figure out how many LEDs I've got. This is a very dense LED strip. So I may not have enough. I may have to upgrade this adapter later. The box that has the control module in it, this guy, which hasn't been soldered yet, he's gonna go in here. This is made for a larger ESP board, um, but whatever, he's just gonna dangle in there probably. This guy won't be powered by USB. He's gonna be powered by this guy. So I need a place to put this in here that will reach these uh, connections. And I'll show you a wiring diagram in a minute on how this gets wired up. But what we do have is this right here. If you can see that, I think you can see that. Let me turn it some here. Right here, there's this nice little circular hole. And in the back, there's access to get through. Now, I don't know what that's there for. Presumably, it's to get wiring in. I don't know. There's also this guy here 
which you could use to pass wires through. But I think it'd be really cool if I took this and put it here for power. The problem with that is, let me get the camera here. The problem with that is, if you look there, this is past the back. So that means this won't mount flush to the wall if I leave it like that. So, what I'm going to do is try to make this hole a little bigger with a big old file. All right, so we've got some wires to deal with here. The LED strip does come with this handy little plug on it, but in my case, I don't really need this. So I'm gonna cut it off with some room to spare. If I ever wanna reuse this plug, I'll have some room. Right, I can strip those off and use it if I really wanted to. I have a whole box of these things that I bought in bulk, so I'm not that worried about it. Now, on this guy, I don't know if you can read these, but this very bottom pin here is ground. The, sorry, even I can't read them. This very bottom pin is five volts. The next one up from it is ground, and the first one up from there is D4. That's a data pin. The way these work, we've got these two extra five volt ground leads. We actually don't need these for this setup. What these are for is if you need to inject extra power for longer runs, you'd use these two. So basically, um, if you like the strip, the strip that runs around the upper end of my office here. You see how over there I've got that extra line? That's an extra 5 volt that runs into the LED strip so that it's powered like basically the second strip has additional power because this is two strips strung together that's what those are for that's what these extra lines are for we don't really need those in this particular setup but what i'm going to do is snip these off because i don't need them and then we're going to work with just these three okay so those are out of the way now these three these are 5 volt data and ground that go not only to my controller board, right? 5 volt ground and D4 we're going to use for data. But they also go, the power and or the 5 volt and ground also go to my plug. And we just did our test before. The shorter one is 5 volt, the longer one is ground. Right? So what I usually do is I make some jumpers. I could have, I guess I could just use these for jumpers. Maybe I will use those for jumpers. And I take them from here. I also wire these to here. Right? And then these go over to here. Right? On the 5 volt and ground. And then the data goes to data, right? So we got to get all that wired up. It'll make more sense in a minute. And I've also got a wiring diagram up there that uh, I will take a screenshot of and put in the video. these guys strip one end of them okay now this end strip these back a little further so I got more room to work with these guys are all gonna go to my plug so I need to take the little threaded doohickey that holds the plug in place and put them over the wires because there's no way to get them over top of there otherwise. Okay, so get them through here. Come on. I 
if I forget that, it gets real annoying, and then you might hear me say some words I shouldn't say on YouTube. Although I'm sure other people do plenty. Okay, now. Got all these wires to deal with. We're gonna take these two. The whites. And which will be ground. And twist them together. Okay, and then these have to go to the longer pin on here, right? And the nice thing about this is, once I get them soldered on there, I have plenty of room to get it through the back. So I kind of like the way they designed that. What I like to do is I twist them together, put them through there, right? Fold it back. All right, so I'll save you 20 minutes of watching me strip wires and solder, but what it comes down to is you need to take the two jumpers that I showed you and the the five volt and the ground that come from the LED strip and you wanna wire those up to the five volt and the ground from your power source. Then you wanna take the jumpers to the five volt and the ground on the ESP board. And then you wanna take the data or the green from the LED strip and also wire that to the data pin that we talked about on the ESP board. Once those are done, you can plug it in to get power and you should get the first, I don't know, five or 10 LEDs on the strip to light up automatically. Once those are lit, then you should know that not only is the board powered, but WLED booted up. And then you can log in through that wireless access point that it stands up and you can actually complete the configuration. And then you'll be able to configure the, uh, the number of LEDs and the name of the device and things like that. Underneath the LED preferences, you're gonna find a box where it says how many LEDs are in your string. Now, if you didn't sit down and count them or perhaps measure the strand before you put it into the uh, enclosure, you're just gonna have to go trial and error. For me, the number, the magic number was 188. And once I figured out that number and I set it, I was able to set that and save it. Once that's saved, you're gonna to wanna to also set WLED to connect to your home Wi-Fi. That way you'll be able to connect to it either from your phone, or in my case, I use Home Assistant to talk directly to WLED so I can control it through my smart lighting. Once that's all set up, then you can go through and play with the different patterns and whatnot that WLED has to offer. Uh, home Assistant is really great for this because it actually can read all of those configurations and you can set them right through Home Assistant. So I can set up scenes and whatnot so that when I activate a certain scene or a certain time of day or whatever, uh, the hex light can display a certain pattern at that time. There's some really cool ones in there. You're gonna wanna check them out and see what they're all about. And really that's it. Uh, the hardest part of this whole project is getting that soldering done and getting the programming done on the ESP board. But if you're comfortable with plugging in a device via USB, and you're comfortable with a soldering iron, you can totally do this project and uh, you will you should be pretty happy with the results. Now, obviously it requires a 3D printer, a soldering iron, some solder, a little bit of skill with a soldering iron, and of course the ability to use that ESP tool that I showed you. Now there's a Windows version of that that is graphical and there might even be a Mac version, although I haven't looked at it. You don't need a ton of special skills and you end up with a really cool project in the other end. The cool thing is that you can apply this to other LED strips. You don't have to use this hex setup that I did. You can buy on Amazon, you can get um, enclosures for these LED strips that give you that nice uh, frosted lens over top of them, like the one I showed you that goes around the upper, the upper border of my office. And you can just put the LED strip inside of there. You don't have to use a hex, uh, 3D printed hex setup like I did in this project. So there's a lot of really cool options for this. I, I do things like I have a, uh, like a nightlight in my hallway so that in the middle of the night, there's a motion sensor in the hallway. If somebody walks into the hallway, the motion light comes on so they can walk down the hallway with at least a little bit of light lighting up the floor so they don't trip over the dogs or whatever. So it's there's a lot of really cool, like practical use cases for these the, for these LED strips. So they're not just to look cool in the background on your uh, your your live stream or whatever. 
So at any rate, I hope you've enjoyed this little build and please, you know, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see other projects or if you have any questions or whatever. And thanks for watching.